So, how were low temperatures generated? A very important procedure for generating low temperatures is the joule thomson effect, which was discovered in 1852. And after its discovery, it led to the liquefaction of many different gases. What the joule thomson effect basically involves is a process called throttling of a gas, wherein a gas which is having a volume V1 and a pressure P1 is forced through a porous plug and is allowed to expand freely. And when it is allowed to expand freely, there is a slight pressure drop P2 where P2 is less than P1 and also sometimes this expansion of the gas or this throttling process, it is called as the process of throttling of the gas. This throttling process leads to a slight drop in temperature T2 of the gas. So the pressure drops as well as the temperature can drop. This of course does not happen always and we shall see why under what conditions there is going to be a drop in temperature. But the process of throttling of a gas in which the gas is allowed to expand freely through this porous plug and it is of course has to be done adiabatically such that no heat enters or exits from the system and the expansion has to be using its own internal energy. Then in such cases the system can in certain conditions lead to a drop in temperature and basically this was the joule thomson effect which was widely used and which still is used for producing low temperatures, liquefying gases. So let's look at the process, the JT process, the joule thomson throttling process a little bit more carefully. Now initially the volume V1 is equal to say V and V2 is equal to 0 because there is no gas on this side. The pressure P1 is what is present. So the work done on the gas, the initial work done on the gas which is equal to and P2 is of course 0. So P2 V2 minus P1 V1 is minus P1 V1 as this is basically 0. After all the gas has been transferred from this end, after all the gas has been transferred from this end and taken to this end, the volume of the gas V1 is now 0 and the volume of the gas V2 is now whatever V or whatever the volume of the gas is V2. Let's say the volume of the gas is V2 and the pressure of the gas is now P2. So after the throttling process has occurred, the work done P2 V2 minus P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. So therefore, the work done on the gas, the total work done on the gas is W1 plus W2. The total work done on the gas is the sum of these two, which is equal to minus P1 V1 plus P2 V2. This is the total work done on the gas. Now, if you go further and look at, so the total work done on the gas is minus P1 V1 plus P2 V2. And now, let us look at how much is the net heat flow into the system or the change in the heat of the system there is the whole process is occurring adiabatically so dq is 0 if dq is 0 then du plus tw is 0 or the change in internal energy is minus dw because dq is 0 
and this implies that u2 minus u1 the change in the internal energy of the system is minus of minus p1 v1 plus p2 v2 which will give you that p1 v1 plus u1 is equal to p2 v2 plus u2 so what it means is that the enthalpy of the system which undergoes the joule thomson expansion process or the joule thomson throttling process the joule thomson throttling process or expansion is an isenthalpic process thermodynamically it's an isenthalpic process because the enthalpy of the system remains constant the enthalpy of the system which is u plus pv is in some sense like a measure of the total energy or the total heat content of the system this is like a measure of the total heat content of the system thermodynamically so when you have a joule thomson expansion in the system then the enthalpy of the system remains fixed constant now an important measure of how much is the temperature change in the gas because of the joule thomson expansion which leads to a drop in pressure dp is measured by this joule thomson coefficient mu jt which is delta p by delta delta t by delta p at constant enthalpy this is a measure of how much is the change in temperature of the gas because a drop in pressure because of the joule thomson expansion so let us try and calculate this quantity and see how does it behave it is important for you to see is that dp is the change in pressure which is p2 minus p1 and remember that p2 is less than p1 because of the free expansion p2 is much less than p1 so dp is typically less than 0 therefore if mu jt if the value of this coefficient is greater than 0 dp remember dp is always less than 0 so if mu jt is greater than 0 it would mean that dt has to be less than 0 only then you would have mu jt greater than 0 and this implies that the temperature t2 of the gas is less than temperature t1 which implies cooling so you will have cooling of the gas only if mu jt is greater than 0 if mu jt becomes less than 0 or if mu jt is less than 0 then dt is greater than 0 because dp is always less than 0 and this would imply t2 is greater than t1 which actually give, would give rise to heating of the gas so not necessarily and mu jt can actually be greater than 0 or it can be less than 0 and therefore not necessarily when you do joule thomson expansion of the gas you should always get cooling there are situations in which actually you can start heating heating the gas in spite of you actually causing the free expansion of the gas through the porous plug in spite of throttling the gas actually the final temperature of the gas might actually rise t2 might actually be greater than t1 and not necessarily cooling but however under certain conditions it is important 
for you to see that there can be cooling of the gas.